Hi, I'm Joshua Lau, and I'll be talking about algorithms and hardness for multi-dimensional range updates and queries. This is the longer form of a talk to be given at ITCS 2021, and this is a joint work with Angus Rotosko. So just jumping in, I'll first start by talking about traditional orthogonal range problems. So in traditional orthogonal range problems, uh, one's given maybe in 2D, a set of peak points, each with some value, and each of these points is located in the plane. The task is to construct a data structure that facilitates online queries over ranges of these points. And the answer to each query is some information or some aggregate about the points that lie in that range. So for instance, in this example, if we query this range, we might ask for the number of points in that range, which is two. We might ask for the maximum value in the range, which is five. Uh, and we also consider dynamic versions of this data structures problem where points can be added or removed. So for instance, if we add a point, say the six here, we can then perform queries over this modified data set. So the maximum in this range is eight and the sum in this range is 18. So each individual problem is parameterized by uh, the type of queries that are supported. So if where P is the number of points uh, in two dimensions, if our query is either asking for the sum, which we denote by a plus, because this is the semi-group operator, um, or, uh, or, ma or max, which asks for the maximum value in the range, uh, we can solve these in order log squared p time, uh, or better, for operation, depending on uh, which queries and what sort of updates are supported. Uh, and for an oper by an operation, we, we mean uh, either adding a point or removing a point, or uh, issuing a query. But say we want to use more powerful updates over our data set where we want to modify more than a point. Uh, what can we do? So to this end, uh, in our work, we introduce the idea of range updates. So consider this set of points here. Uh, in a range update, we might be able to, uh, we will provide a range and a constant, say two, and we'll allow updates which replace the value of each uh, point in that range uh, with two. Uh, that gives us this data set. And we also investigate and are interested in uh, different types of updates. So for instance, maybe updates that plus or add or increment a constant to all points that fall within a range, like so. Uh, and another update which uh, we call max or maximizer, which replaces the value of each point within a particular range with the, the update specific constant. So in this case, this is uh, maximizing with two. And as you can see, um, this zero over here has changed to a two over here uh, because the maximum of zero and two is two. But this three remains unchanged because of, of course three is greater than two. So we also have a min, an equivalent min update uh, which does the same except replaces the value with the minimum of say two and uh, the value of the point. So the types of problems we get here um, can be described by the query that's supported. So either plus or max um, are under our consideration and a set of updates, not just one, a set. Uh, and in our work, we consider plus updates, min updates, set updates and max updates uh, and subsets of these. So in one dimension, uh, it's already known that in amortized order log squared p time per query, uh, we can support each operation uh, and we can do better depending on the set of updates and, and the choice of query that's supported. But not much is known in two dimensions. So our work mainly explores two dimensions and up. Uh, in two dimensions, uh, we show that with a sort of a simple algorithm, um, with using a KD tree, we can flatten um, our problem in two dimensions or actually in arbitrarily many dimensions uh, to a 1D problem. And thus we obtain uh, order or roughly order square root of P time updates. Uh, we use this tilde O notation uh, to suppress polylogarithmic factors. So this is the square root of P times some uh, polylogarithm of P. Uh, and I'll 
just for short, I'll be I'll just be calling this roughly um, square root of p. And we find matching um, or nearly matching uh, lower bounds that are predicated on the online matrix vector conjecture, which we'll discuss shortly. And we base our lower bounds say that there's um, no solution that runs in p to the 0 0.5 minus epsilon for any epsilon greater than zero, uh, unless the online matrix vector, uh, sorry, um, there's, unless the online matrix vector conjecture um, is false. So the models, the models that we've considered so far um, revolve around points. There's a point set and we, and there's a fixed set of P points and we do some updates to those points. And those are useful for maybe representing a, a database table. So you might have a person with an age, um, a height and you, um, and based on the numerical values, you might perform updates. Uh, but another model we consider is uh, as that of arrays. So let's say we have this 2D array here, which is initially all zero. We can perform similar sort of updates to these. So we sort of consider each array cell as a point. So, okay, as an example, um, with using just set updates, we can set this row to six. We can set this range of columns to two. Um, and then we can query over a specific range. And so if this was a, a sum query, um, we would return 24 here, which is the sum of the values. And if this is a max query, we would return six because this is the maximum value in this range. And we can continue supporting updates after that and queries after that. And so this is the sort of problem um, that we're looking at when it comes to arrays. So, we also considered other different types of updates, similarly to our point model. So we can we consider adding a value. So in this case, we can even add a negative value uh, and maximizing with five or any other constant and minimizing just the same as before. Uh, again, we consider the same set of operations for our queries. Uh, and in our model, we're mainly focused on measuring complexity or time complexity as a function of n, where n is the number of updates and queries. So in our model, we assume we have an arbitrarily large 2D array that's all initially zero, and we allow n of these operations, which is sort of the size of the input, and we measure complexity in terms of n. So in terms of prior work that's been done, uh, we know on arrays, in 1D, we have the exact same results as for points, and it's Pretty, um, they're pretty similar actually in terms of their structure. And they run again in polylogarithmic time per operation. Now from this, uh, it's not too difficult to see that in roughly order n time per operation, we can solve this for 2D. Uh, and to do this, we can consider the, uh, the n different updates or update and query um, operations and their ranges. And that sort of divides the grid, uh, uh, divides the array into uh, an n by n grid. And for each row, or for each row in that grid, uh, we can keep a 1D instance. So just by keeping n 1D instances, uh, we can solve the 2D instance in uh, order and order n roughly order n time for operation, or order n squared time, or roughly order n squared time overall. In two dimensions we can solve on arrays uh, the problem of plus updates and plus and some queries. Uh, and we can do this in order log squared and time per operation. And that's um, uh, an existing result in the literature. And it's uh, with using a similar technique, we can, it's, we can handle max updates and max queries as well. So those instances we can do fairly efficiently. Uh, in the special case where in 2D, where the update range covers a single point, this is much like our previous point model where we uh, add or remove a single point um, in a single update. And similarly, this can be done in a similar time. And finally, the, the more similar models to the ones that we're looking at uh, revolve around two problems that have been studied uh, quite extensively. So one is Cleese measure which asks to maintain 
n rectangles uh, in, in 2D. And as these rectangles are added or removed, uh, one needs to report the, the area of the union of the rectangles. And for weighted depth, uh, it's a similar problem where each rectangle is assigned a certain weight. And after each addition or removal of a rectangle, we need to report the point in the plane that's covered by uh, the rectangles whose sum of weights is maximum. And we can facilitate this, or it's known that this can be solved in roughly uh, auto root n time property where n is the total number of operations. So the main question we'll be trying to solve is how hard is this problem on, on two dimensional arrays uh, for different sorts of updates and different sorts of queries. And the one thing I, I'd like um, you to take away from this talk is just to have an idea of how these, pro uh, how these problems work, um, have a feel of how the updates and the queries work together, um, how hard they are, and also just to take a little bit, of, take away a little bit of insight into uh, how their complexity relates to the complexity of other problems that have been studied. So we start with this picture of um, the complexity of our different problems. So down below, we have in nearly linear time over n operations, uh, these two problems that we've discussed before. So recall that each of their, uh, each of these can be solved um, in order log squared n time per operation. So over n operations, this is nearly linear time. And up the top here, we can support all of these updates uh, with either a, a max query or a, a sum query in roughly order n squared time using those order n one dimensional instances. So the question is, is there anything in between? So first up, we'll consider uh, some problems where we have a single update operation and a single query operation. And the question is, well, can these be solved in roughly linear time too? And to answer this question, we'll, uh, we'll establish some lower bounds that show that this is probably not the case. So we'll, our lower bounds will be conditional, um, conditioned on various popular conjectures. And the first one we'll be considering is the online matrix vector conjecture. So to do that, we'll introduce the, OUM, the OUMV problem, uh, which is as follows. So you're given an M by M Boolean matrix uh, it's called M, and you have to answer M online queries, um, each giving you a subset of rows, say R, and a subset of columns, say C. And one needs to determine if there exists a pair um, or a cell in the intersection of the rows and the columns such that the cell is one. So for instance, if the subset of rows given is the top and the bottom row uh, and the middle column, the two cells in the intersection are these green ones here, and they're both one. So the intersection contains a one, and the answer is yes. In the second example, we're given the same set of columns, but the set of, uh, sorry, the same set of rows, but the set of columns is the first and the last. The intersection is these green, the green ones again, uh, and there's no ones, so the answer is no. And in this last example, the intersection is just that one cell that contains a one, and the answer is yes once again. So while this isn't exactly the, on, the OMV or online matrix vector conjecture, uh, it's, it was shown in the paper that originally proposed this conjecture that this problem is uh, subcubic equivalent to uh, the online matrix vector problem. So what that means is there is no truly subcubic algorithm for this problem that is facilitating M online queries on an M by M grid in time order m to the three minus epsilon for some positive epsilon uh, overall, unless this OMV conjecture is false. So there are three conditions uh, in a given query for the answer to be yes. So uh, there must be a cell that, sorry, there's a cell that satisfies the three conditions, the three conditions being uh, the cell is in uh, one of the rows of R, the cell is in one of the columns of C, and the cell also contains a one in the matrix M. So we'll use this fact to reduce to um, the problem where we support plus updates, so incrementing uh, a range of values 
uh, and max queries, as in returning the maximum value in a range. So we'll use order m squared updates to initialize the grid. So the grid is initially zero. Using order m squared updates, we'll set the value of each cell so that it resembles our matrix M. Now, for a given query, we'll check for the three conditions by first. For each of the rows, we'll increment them by one. And for each of the columns, we'll increment them by one. And it's easy to see that the cells that have value three are the ones that satisfy all three conditions. And these are the only ones that can have value three. And so to test if any such cell exists, we can use a maximum query to check for three. And finally, to get ready for the next query, because the queries are being done online, uh, we can undo the updates. And so we do them by um, adding a negative one to each of those rows or columns. So we can, and once we do that, we repeat for the remaining queries. This reduction uses order m squared operations overall. And so because there's no um, truly subcubic algorithm for uh, OUMV under the, under the online matrix vector conjecture, uh, that means that under the same conjecture, there should be no uh, order n to the one and a half minus epsilon time solution for this plus update and max query. So using a similar reduction, uh, we can show similar hardness for pretty much um, all of our other single update, uh, single update instances, except for those which we saw earlier that have roughly linear time solutions already. So if we go back to our picture, under the online matrix vector conjecture, there's none of these can be solved in roughly linear time. In fact, they require n to the 1.5 time. Uh, and under the all pairs shortest path conjecture, we show similar hardness for um, that problem that we just looked at before. Okay, so if there's no roughly linear time solution for these problems, maybe they're really hard. So let's look at the hardness for a problem that's um, a little bit harder than these, one that nearly embodies all of the operations for one of our harder, like the hardest problems. So in this case, we'll consider the, the consider problem which supports plus updates, max updates, and plus queries. And we ask, well, can they be solved any faster than roughly n squared time? And the answer one again, once again will be no, and we'll show that under the three sum conjecture. So the three sum problem gives as input m integers, and the task is to check whether there are three values, a, b, and c among these integers, such that a plus b equals c. Uh, the three sum conjecture states that this can't be done in truly subquadratic time. So to solve this, uh, we'll first, we'll, let's consider an example with an array a, which is just one, two, three, four, and five as input. Uh, and we'll use our plus updates to construct an addition table. So first we'll add one, two, three, four, and five to each of our, row, uh, each of our columns. And then we'll do the same for our rows. Now, each of these values will contain uh, the value of a prospective A plus B. So these can be thought of as the A's, these can be thought of as the B's, and we'll iterate through our array, choosing each one one by one and saying, well, maybe this is C, and seeing if there is an A plus B in the grid that matches, um, that matches our C. So let's say our C is four. To check if there's a four in the grid, we'll count the number, we want to count the number of cells that are equal to four. And this can be written as the number that are at most four minus the number that are at most three. Recall that we're dealing with integers. So, to, so now we'll try and count the number that are at most four. So to do that, we'll first apply a max update with four over the entire grid. Now the ones that have changed in value are the ones that were at most four and they've all changed to four, which is this green section here. And then we'll apply a max update using five as our maximizer. And the ones that have changed value here are the ones that, are, that were four before because everything was at least four after the max operation and they've all incremented by one to five. All of those cells that were 
greater than or equal to five or strictly greater than four haven't changed at all. So we can observe that the number of cells that are less than or equal to some X is the sum of uh, the number, so the, the, sorry, the number of cells that are um, at most four is equal to the sum of this A5 grid minus the sum of this A4 grid. And more generally, we can write it as this for, uh, for a general X. So using just two updates and a single query, we're able to count the number less than or equal to a certain amount. Uh, and that's enough to determine for each element in the array, uh, whether or not there's an A plus B that matches it. This uses order M operations overall. And so under the three sum conjecture, there's no truly subquadratic time for this problem. So how does this affect our, our complexity graph? Well, we know that for this problem, there's probably no um, subquadratic time algorithm under the three sum conjecture. And um, for this other problem here, which um, involves plus updates, min updates, and max queries, uh, which is a subset of the, the updates in this hard problem, we, uh, under, the, under the orthogonal vectors conjecture, uh, we show similar hardness as well. So because we know that all of these are solvable in roughly quadratic time, and we have a, a nearly quadratic time lower bound or conditional lower bound, we see that these form um, almost type solutions for these problems. Okay, so we have some hard problems up here, and we know that these problems with single updates all have, um, all require at least into the one into the one point five time roughly. So the question is, maybe these are really hard, and maybe these also require uh, at least quadratic time. So is this the case? Well, to answer this, um, we now turn our attention to upper bounds. So we we seek to find algorithms that actually solve these problems, and where our goal is to find algorithms that solve these in truly subquadratic time. So our main approach uses this idea of trellises. So over Mars and Yap in 1991, when they were tackling the Cleese measure problem, uh, they proved the following result. And so they proved that if you have n rectangles in the plane, we can partition the plane into order n parts, which they call trellises, such that no rectangles vertex is in, in any part and each part is only partially covered by order squared and rectangles. So a part might be wholly covered by um, many, many rectangles, but it could only have partial overlap with at most square root of order square root of n rectangles. So our idea is that we'll treat our update ran ranges as these rectangles. So in each of these three cases, um, this black square here represents a part. So if each of these black squares is a part and each of these rectangles is an update range, there's only three ways that an update range can overlap with this part. So one is um, that it overlaps horizontally, as in it covers the entire width of, of the part, um, but it, entire, it covers the entire width of the part and maybe some subset of its height. Um, it could be the same thing, but vertically or it could wholly cover the part. And these are the only cases because any other partial overlap uh, would mean that a vertex of this rectangle um, lies inside the part, which is not allowed by the first condition. So the theorem basically means that there are only square root of n horizontal or vertical parts because they partially cover this rectangle, but there could be order n uh, updates that wholly cover a part. And we can get around these by using some range update tricks, especially for the problems that we've considered. Uh, but we don't talk about the, we won't talk about these in detail. Um, these are covered in more detail in the paper. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll treating the, each update range as such a rectangle. We provide in the paper a reduction to a simple version of these, of our original problems. So in our simple version of problems, uh, we can treat this black square as, a, as, a, uh, as the entire grid or the entire array. 
and these blue and red strips uh, are, treat, are our update ranges. So we've basically reduced our original problem where ranges could have arbitrary geometry and could lie arbitrarily in the plane. We reduced that instance to one where we only care about, we, or we only have to think about updates which either wholly cover the width or wholly cover the, the height of our array. So another way of saying it is that each of our updates either covers all columns and some rows, or all rows and some columns. And over Mars and Yap, I guess they called it a trellis because they look kind of like these garden trellises over here. So how do we solve this special case? Well, going back to our plus update max query problem, uh, we can see this example. So let's say we add one to, to this row. We add two to these columns. We add four to these rows and we add eight to these columns, producing the following grid. Now, if we want to find the maximum of um, some range, first, we'll write on the top of each, or we'll compute for each column, the total amount that's been added to these columns just by these vertical updates or these column updates. So you can notice that for this particular column, it's had plus 10 overall added to it because there's been a plus eight update applied to these two columns and a plus two update applied to these three columns, which both affect this one column. And we do the same for rows. Now, if we take a range like the following, to find its maximum, the maximum value contained in the range, it suffices to find the maximum value among the rows that the range lies in, which in this case is four, and the maximum value of the columns it lies in, which in this case is 10 and we can add them together. Now, the reason we can do this is because the update distributes over the query. So we can sort of have, we can solve each dimension independently and combine the results later. This is a, um, a sufficient condition, but not a necessary condition. So we can do, we can solve in a similar way, some other problems that uh, don't necessarily satisfy this distributive property. The improvement we make over existing methods uh, known for weighted depth and for Cleese measure is that we make this fully dynamic. So in previous approaches, uh, the decomposition um, into these different parts required that uh, the coordinates of all of the rectangles be known uh, beforehand. So before any updates or queries um, were, were handled. Uh, but in our case, we're able to make this fully dynamic um, meaning that even if the update and query ranges aren't known when we start and when we do pre-computation, that's okay. So that means we can solve variants that satisfy this property in roughly n to the one and a half time. So that, that approach works for our plus update max um, query problem, as well as our min update max query problem. The set update max query problem doesn't quite satisfy the distributive property, but we're still able to um, solve the problem in the same sort of way. Okay, so this gives us roughly tight and hardness for this n to the 1.5 class um, of problems, but it still remains how we solve this set update plus query problem. So we'll now look at solving that. So. As an example, we can set this row to be six, this, these columns to be eight, this row to be seven, these rows to be seven, and this column, these columns to be nine. Now the trouble is we can't use the same technique from before because the dimensions aren't independent. So for instance, this cell here, its value is sort of nine if we just considered the vertical updates but its value would be seven if we just considered the horizontal updates. And there's no straightforward to, way to um, combine these two together in a batched way um, without considering dimensions together. So to solve this sort of problem, we introduce a new tool um, that we prove in our paper. And we prove the following theorem. So for this problem, we have plus query and set updates. Uh, we show that if we can solve a static trellised instance, so static means that all the updates come before all the queries. If we can solve such a special instance in this complexity, we'll get a truly subquadratic time solution. So this complexity is a little bit complex, 
But if n equals q, this just becomes n to the 1.5 minus epsilon. And this gamma, which varies, which can be anything between 0 and 1, um, is this so that we can obtain uh, sub-additive uh, sub -additive running time with respect to q. So if there are many queries, um, it, it doesn't take too long. So this, can, so this theorem is, is more general than this and actually applies when um, we can solve from partial information. So we won't go through what exactly that means. That's covered in the paper. Uh, but set update and plug queries satisfy um, this requirement. And this is a, a necessary condition for this theorem to work. Okay, so with armed with this, how do we solve um, our set update plus query problem? Well, first we make some simplifications. Uh, the value of each cell is derived either from a, a horizontal query, a horizontal update, or a vertical update. So without loss of generality, if we're looking for the sum of a range, we can consider these two cases separately. So to do that, we'll assume that the vertical update is always set to zero, and we're just considering the value derived from horizontal updates. Similarly, we can consider the horizontal updates uh, as binary strings. So their values like seven and six, we can write them as, the, as binary strings and consider each power of two in turn. Uh, if the power of two is zero, then it doesn't really change the value of the horizontal update. So we can assume that all the horizontal, all the horizontal updates uh, are set to one. So if there's a, a zero update and there's later a one update, the one will win out. Um, but for simplicity um, and without loss of generality, we can assume that all the horizontal updates are set to one. And now from the, sim the simplified version, we can reduce to uh, range inversion counting on arrays. So this is a problem on arrays. Um, and to reduce, we'll first determine for each row and for each column, uh, the time of the latest horizontal or vertical update that um, fully covers that column or row. So for instance, uh, this column over here was covered originally by um, a, an update at time two, and then later an update at time four. So th the latest update covering it is time four. And we have the same deal for rows. From these times, we can construct an array, which is just the concatenation of these times for our rows and these times for our columns. So this is one array. Now, if we look at the time, uh, if we look at the um, the value of a particular cell, we can see that it's one if the row update was after the column update, um, and it's zero otherwise. So in this case, this cell is one because its row update is three and its column update is two and the row is greater. But this cell, is its value is zero because its column update was a time one, uh, its row update was a time one and its column update was a time four. So naturally, if we look at a range of rows and a range of columns, uh, the sum of values in that range is equal to the number of inversions between um, the, this range of rows and this range of columns, where an inversion is a pair um, with the first element drawn from the, the first range, the second element drawn from the second range, and the first element being greater than the second element. So how is this helpful? Well, if you recall from our theorem, we require something that runs in strictly faster than n to the 1.5 time to obtain a truly subquadratic time solution overall. So we have the following equivalences in, um, between various problems. So we've just shown that when we have n updates and n queries in a static trellis version of this problem, this we can reduce to um, a similarly sized instance of inversion counting on an array of size n, also with n queries. And in, in the paper, we show uh, a reduction the other way, uh, showing an equivalence between these two problems. In a recent work, um, there was an equivalence shown between that inversion counting problem an edge triangle counting on a graph with n edges, uh, which asks, given a graph um, for every edge, count the number of triangles that is three cycles um, that contain that edge. And the same work showed that all of these are solvable in n to the 1.407 time, which is handy because this is less or strictly less than the 1.5 that we need. But recall from the statement of the theorem that we actually require some multivariate version of this. 
So if instead we have Q queries, where which is not the same as the number of updates, um, we have a similar equivalence to inversion counting with Q queries. But in this case, um, the instance of inversion counting is equivalent not to edge triangle counting, but to two path counting, which asks given an edge an n edge graph and Q vertex pairs, how many two paths or paths of length two are there between each vertex pair? And this is solvable in this time complexity where these two exponents add up to that 1.407 um, number that we saw before. And so um, this gives us a truly subquadratic time algorithm for um, our set update plus query problem in general, not just when the queries are and updates are static trellised. And it gives this time complexity. Now, when we also allow plus updates thrown into the mix, uh, we instead give a reduction to a generalization of inversion counting, which we don't talk about here, but it's, it's talked about in the paper. And we show that this is equivalent to three path counting. So instead of two paths, this is three paths. Uh, and we show that in slightly slower amount of time, but still less than that sort of ends the 1.5 time overall, uh, we can solve this problem. And this gives, uh, for the general problem, a uh, truly subquadratic time algorithm that gets in just under n squared time. So how does this affect our complexity map? Well, both the set update plus query problem and the plus update, set update, and plus query problem are both solvable in truly subquadratic time, which is good news, which means that um, they no, don't fall into this complexity class up here. Using similar techniques, we can solve um, this problem, which allows min updates, set updates, max updates, um, and max queries. Uh, and it runs in n to the 1.75, or roughly into the 1.75 time over here. So all of these lie, we know lie at least south of this line, but we don't know if they can be solved in roughly into the 1.5 time down here. So we leave these open. Uh, and other problems we leave open are these two. So max updates and plus queries. So we know all we know is that this is at least as hard as set updates and plus queries, the problem we just spent some time looking at just then um, through reduction, but we don't know much more than that. So we don't know if they, they really lie, uh, this problem really lies up here um, or somewhere in the middle or down here, which would also imply that this problem lies down there as well. And for this other problem, we similarly don't know which category it belongs in. So it's kind of an open question whether um, either of these problems lies in which of these categories. And so um, that concludes our talk. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully uh, we can use these, um, pro these range update problems um, to solve other problems as well. Because we think that especially in areas such as dynamic programming optimization, um, in other areas, reductions to these problems will be quite natural. Uh, and so ho hopefully establishing complexity of these problems will give us greater insight into other problems. Thanks for watching.